let's get started. So welcome to the OKD documentation subgroup meeting for January 25th of the year 2022. Please take a look at the agenda real quick and uh, let me know if there's anything you want to change or modify. I'll put uh, the link in the chat as well so that folks can see it. And don't forget to put your name uh, in the attendance. Uh, and it looks like we have a couple folks um, that um, haven't been to meetings before. Um, if you want to introduce yourselves, feel f free to do so. No pressure, but uh, if you want to introduce yourself uh, uh, either in the chat or live in audio and video, go right ahead. Yeah, sure. Hi, this is Aisha, and I work with the, with the CFE team and with the Splat team as a software engineer and mainly works with the VMware vSphere and uh, CI related stuff. Um, Christian introduced me for the OKD group and because I'm also going to uh, participate with him as a co-speaker in a DEF CONF 2022 uh, for the OKD presentation. So because I was always been really interested for OKD and I really like, uh, I mean, uh, that's the community thing and I really like it. Um, and I, I'm also really interested uh, in OKD. That's why I'm, I'm joining this meeting and I wanted to say hi to everyone. Um, Christian is not in the meeting, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm hopeful that I will be joining the meetings in coming weeks, every week as much as I can and or contribute as much as I can. Excellent. Well, welcome to the meeting. Um, anyone else want to introduce themselves? Hi, I'm Shireen. I'm also on the CFE team, like Aisha. Uh, I'm new to the team. It's been a couple of months only, and uh, actually, OKD is on the on the team's agenda. So I was just curious to know uh, how we can help out. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, anyone else want to introduce? I think we have one other person. No? Okay. Well, let's move on then, and let's take a look at the agenda. And uh, we'll start out with um, issues uh, in the repo. Brian, are there any issues or pull requests uh, in the documents repo? Um, there was one from Sandro. Um, oh, I got the wrong window. Um, yeah, he, he, he raised one just off the meeting last week um, around the community section. Um, so it's issue number 255 in the um, in the OKD or IO meeting. I'll post the link into the chat. Um, the Blue Jeans chat. So I, I think we're probably going to need Diane to look at this one because it, it really looks as to what is the purpose of the external sort of the community site um, and should we consolidate it? And and I think the community site was more around the, the wider um, commons community that everything was meant to point to, but I'm not sure how many other projects there are that uses that. and. Um, so I'm not sure we can answer that today. Yeah, so that was originally um, uh, so when I first started attending the meetings, uh, there was this community with the charter, which were reworking the charter. Uh, you know, the new chairs and stuff like that were modified to that recently. Um, and then there was also uh, like, I think that's where the projects tab is, isn't it? Where, where was, um, there used to be a, a tab that had like the meeting stuff. Yeah, that's it. So uh, it, under projects, there's like a, um, oh no, that's not it either. So there used to be a, a, a panel basically with all of the um, lists of tasks and whatnot 
and I don't know, it's in one of the repositories, it might be, might have been in this one. In terms of the community stuff, do folks see a reason to keep it around? I mean, we're, we're basically moving, well, I guess this centers around the question. Let me phrase it this way. Is there value in separating the web content from the administrative content? The community one is basically administrative stuff like the charter, members, owners, roadmap. Is there any reason why that should continue to be separated from the web content or the repo I, that has the web content? I, I guess, I mean, there's only five documents in it. And it's, are we the only project in the community? In which case, I don't think it makes sense separating it. Um, however, if this was meant to look at a wider set of projects and um, then I think it does make sense but if it's purely the OKD community I think we should pull us into the OKD.io site or put it in the OpenShift repo I don't think it makes sense having a, a whole repo for five markdown files right Bruce what do you think uh, yeah I know that makes sense to me as as well and I mean, if you look at the uh, URL, you know, it's like OKDIO slash community. So it, uh, you know, would seem that it, that it would only be OKDIO projects. So why not fold it in? Like, I, I think that there is a, a general problem that, you know, several other people have brought up which is that uh, our communications is extremely fragmented um, with a number of places where people could go. Um, some of them are challenging to get into. You sort of have to be invited and you know, others are relatively easy. But um, you know, I, I think that in, in general, if we can consolidate so that there's like one place as much as possible, that would be fine. Now, for community outreach, which is one of Diane's big concerns, that's a different story, and I know nothing about that, so uh, I don't offer an opinion. Yeah, I think that this was created because the sense was that OKD was the community distribution of Kubernetes and open, and that was the, you know, the tagline of it. And so I think that's why this was created, but I've never seen any other projects, and obviously there's no documentation in here, from anything else. Um, the last commit was the changing the charter or changing, uh, yeah, it was like changing the chairs and the, the format of the affiliations, which was something that I did and, and Christian approved. Um, all right, well, straw poll vote seems to indicate that, um, well, do any of our other guests have any thoughts on this? I don't want it to just be the regulars. Anyone else have any thoughts about, you know, repos and should administrative stuff like that's in this repo, should it be separate? Can it be folded into a single repo where we also have our website stuff and other files? I'll give anyone a chance to chime in if they want. Okay, doesn't seem like anyone has anything to add. So uh, I, I think we should fold it in to the new Let's do it when we make the change to the OKD project uh, GitHub. Does that make sense to do it all like at once? Yeah, I think it. I think it makes sense to to do it. And again, just for the the new members joining, we are looking to create our own GitHub organization um, and put all our content within that organization. Um, rather than within the OpenShift GitHub organization, or I forget what the custom, the, the CS customer support, which is where the website is. So we, we, at some point in the near future, we're going to put everything into a new, new GitHub organization for OKD. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for that context. Oh, related to that uh, change. Uh, I was just thinking about how 
like the best uh, sort of GitHub name was already taken, uh, and we tried to get it back and couldn't, uh, which is not untypical, I, I think, with my experience as well. Um, so now we have sort of uh, uh, like OKD projects or something like that. Yeah, um, OKD dash project. Yeah. Dash project, which is not something that would occur to people to look for. Right. Um, so maybe we should task Diane to uh, look into uh, search engine optimization to move that name up in the list. So if somebody searches for a, you know, like OKD or something like that, that right. that one appears. And, and that will give people a way of finding it right. in, in sort of a natural way. Now, we do have OKD in GitLab, right? I think that we did end up getting that. Um, but... Uh, uh, do we? I hadn't heard that. Okay. I thought that we did, yeah. Oh, no, that's that one we couldn't get into. That's the Kenzo Akuda owns that one. What was the... Ones. Is it that both of them were owned by someone else? I'm trying to remember here. Yeah, it's like both of them are are like they were created by people and then like never used. Um, okay, so yeah, we can't get Git on uh, or can't get OKD on either of them, which okay. is too bad. So all right, let's talk to Diane. Well, I'll add that as an item here. So um, asks, I'll add that, uh, talk to Diane about uh, SEO. Um, by the way, she will not be uh, in the next few meetings, actually. She is taking a much needed break. Um, so let's move on to the next item. Uh, are there any pull requests that we should be aware of, Brian? Anything that came in in terms of pull requests? Nope, nothing since the last meeting. Okay, great. Uh, new business, uh, the Slack channel, Dev Slack channel. Um, you know, going back to, to folks maybe that didn't pick this up in the, the main meeting, um, there's questions about the value of having the Dev Slack channel. It's, it's almost exclusively be used by people posting user questions, sometimes cross-posting with the user channel as well. Um, does this group see any reason to keep the dev channel around? Well, I, I actually, um, like the way it's currently formulated, no. Um, but uh, I sort of had this idea of the two channels somehow being, uh, you know, one more for admin issues and the other for actual user issues like people running applications on OKD would be the users and people administering OKD would be, you know, admin. And so uh, I, I was originally like a long time ago looking at the dev channel as being more for, uh, you know, people trying to get OKD itself to work versus running loads on OKD. Um, and maybe you have those two distinct communities. I, I don't know. But as far as people developing OKD, um, I would say there are not so many that they need a Slack channel. You know, they, they can just sort of yell across the hall or something like that, or, well, sure. not quite that, because some of them are in different countries, but sure. figuratively speaking. Sure. Uh, the one thing that I noticed is there's actually very few questions about running workloads. Very, Correct. very few. So I don't know that a separate one for, for folks actually running apps would be necessary. Um, and I, I actually, I actually question the use of Slack. Um, and, and, and it really goes back to the, I mean, we have people cross posting because um, one, they're not getting answers quickly enough because it doesn't seem to be, there's a huge community logging into everywhere to actually answer the questions. But also, I mean, if you're a new user, they're called OpenShift Dev and OpenShift users. So I, I, I think there might be some hesitation is, are they actually for OKD or do I have to be an, an OpenShift paying user? 
I, I think there, there is some confusion around that. Certainly when I first joined the community, I, I saw that. It's like, well, do I have to be a paying user to use this channel? Um, but I understand Red Hat don't use this as an official OpenShift channel. So it is very much a community channel. Um, my take is trying to push everyone onto the GitHub discussions. Let's have one place to go for, for everything. I think I'd be inclined to as well, because then you don't get repeat questions or you can point people to solutions and, and whatnot, as opposed to it's you, it's very hard to keep linking back to previous conver conversations in Slack and solutions and whatnot. So yeah, I'd be inclined to to shut them both down. But uh, but in the conversation last week, it was said that they want to maintain uh, the presence on the on the Kubernetes. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I understand that. But but even so, having the OpenShift name there, it it doesn't sort of suggest that it's also for OKD. Yeah. Unless you start Could, reading the posts. Right. So we we could rename the channel, uh, right. Or at least propose renaming the channel to OKD. And see yeah. if that got pushed back. Uh, right, or OpenShift slash OKD, or OpenShift dash OKD, or something like that. Would it make sense? Or Open? I, I don't know. We, we, let's find out. We can go, reach go, out. Go, yeah, go big or go home. You know. <laughs> uh. We'll see what the options are for that. Okay, so so this group doesn't have a problem with shutting down the dev channel. Because in the main no. meeting, that's what we talked about. Okay. Right. So maybe that's the, the path forward then. Just say yes. Um, okay, so the next thing is something came up last week that was kind of a surprise. It happened pretty quick, you, quickly. Sandro organized a stakeholders, OKD stakeholders meeting on like Monday afternoon, and it happened on Thursday. Uh, and it was Christian Glombeck, um, Vadim, Diane, um, myself. Uh, actually, I had to watch it later because I, I was double booked. Um, and uh, a handful of other folks. Uh, Charo was there. Um, the gist of it is that Sandra wanted to know for the virtualization efforts, what is the path forward? Sandro's here. Sandro, you want to talk about uh, uh, the stakeholders meeting that you organized? Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, just caught me by a surprise, I just joined it. Uh, I was actually in the Rook IO uh, community meeting right now because of uh, uh, the operator support there. So yes, then I, was trying to put together um, kind of the situation of the community and understanding who are the stakeholders and what's the plan for uh, the upcoming year or so. And I understand that it's a huge goal, try to understand what will happen in a year from now in the OpenShift area because it changes every six weeks. So it's really hard to, but yeah. Um, with regards to uh, the involvement for the OKD virtualization part, uh, uh, I understood from uh, the discussion that we had that um, there is a, a good opportunity there to have um, good support from the OKD community on that. And so I believe that it will be a nice contribution there. Uh, one of the things that just now in the RUKIO community meeting uh, they raised is that they fear about having confusion between uh, um, the OKD uh, version and the OpenShift version of the operator. And uh, out of the stakeholders meeting, uh, it sorted out that there is a plan for uh, having a dedicated OKD operator hub. And this will solve this issue. So uh, I'm pretty sure that this will help getting also the Rook.io operator into, into OKD. Right, and one of the things that um, Diane suggested at that meeting, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna move forward with that, is that we assemble a subgroup for operator stuff, because this has been sort of ongoing 
we want to address it. Bruce, I know you're very passionate about it, uh, but it seems like a good idea. Maybe it's an async uh, subgroup, uh, doesn't have to meet, but just defining tasks and pushing people to get that community operator catalog, uh, the OKD community catalog created, separate catalog for OKD, and get, then get it populated uh, with uh, all of the operators we know and love. Is there any opposition to that idea? Uh, or any thoughts well, on that idea? I, yeah, go ahead, Brian. I was gonna say, I mean, w one of my, I guess, frustrations with the OKD project is when things happen behind closed doors within Red Hat, and as a community member, you just feel you're helpless in getting anything done. So is this going to be an operator catalog that's built as part of the Red Hat um, build process, internal build process? Or is it something that we're looking to own as a community? Did you actually talk about how it's going to be manifested? Um, is it something that conversation the... Sandro can speak to this a little bit more, but okay. um, and and other folks who were at the meeting uh, live, but it, the well, gist of it is that there is the the person who currently is the point of contact for catalogs, right? Sandro, um, I, I have no specific uh, answer for that because I don't really understand how the catalog itself works. But from what I understood is a bunch of configuration files in a GitHub repo. So I believe that it can be handled completely on community side. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 issue, the issue currently is it's built using Prow. All the images are built using Prow. And so for example, if I want to customize it, I go through this sort of chase through a lot of repositories to try and work out how I can replicate the build. Nowhere do we have, like in, in a traditional open source re repo, there's usually an instruction that says how to build this. Right. Where I think the Red Hat ones talk about the internal PRO, um, build process, CI process, and there's all sorts of linkages in with that. And you look at a single repository and it just links to other repositories and it just seems to be a, an endless chain of trying to follow stuff through and missing information. So, and then if you want to do anything, if you want to suggest an update, we're locked out to those repositories because they are Red Hat repos and the community members have no sort of permission on there. So if this is going to be specifically for OKD, is it going to be done as the product is done or is there an opportunity to actually open it up a little bit so so we have some control and some say in in the operators let's i think that that's a that's a um a question for this subgroup to to find out and do the research and meet with red hat we have some names of people um there's the person that we talked about at the last meeting and then there's some people that came out of this um meeting on thursday that we can talk to let's get a list of people together um, who are interested in this topic, and maybe it's the same group, I don't know. Diane was suggesting a, a subgroup. Um, there might be people who are interested in, in operator stuff but not interested in documentation. Um, let's get that group together, work asynchronously, and press some buttons and see what happens. I think we can do some research looping in Vadim, looping in Christian, and um, looping in the person whose name I forgot already that we talked about at the main meeting last week um, and seeing exactly what is possible. I, I, I think, you know, I agree that a truly, a true OKD catalog would have to have some ability, there'd have to be some ability for us to, to make some modification to it and have some governance over it, the OKD community to have some governance over it in some I mean, fashion. Yeah, I would say even if we can't modify it, if we can clone the repo and customize it for our own personal needs, right? I think that would be something where at the minute it's not obvious or trivial how I would do that, say, for the community catalog that's currently in OKD. Um, I mean, that should all be public open source stuff, but trying to work out even how to rebuild that and get that configured into OKD is not a trivial task for anybody at the minute. Right. Yeah. 
No, I, I agree. I guess my main concern would be that uh, uh, going from the uh, current version to an OK version, we then cut the number of operators down by another factor of 10. And so we have an OKD catalog that has like one operator in it. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, maybe the uh, etcd operator. Uh, well, you can, you can, um, it's an array, right? Isn't, isn't the catalog list, isn't it a list? Well, I, it's actually, a container. Yeah, it's, it's, a it's container. sort of tricky though, because if, uh, like I, I was, I discovered, uh, oh, I don't know, a short while ago, that uh, uh, if you have an operator that's in the catalog that's you know that's managed, uh, then you cannot have your own version of the same operator. So like there's a wildfly operator in the uh, oh sorry well it's, it's that, that that one's actually not an operator so maybe it doesn't apply to operators. Uh, there's a, a a wildfly builder image, and uh, that gets tracked whenever they uh, you know, update the version. And it's generally a couple of versions behind. Okay, fair enough. So uh, before it was there at all, I could install my own. But once it's there, then uh, it overrides what I install. And so there are some interactions with things, you know, like the sort of official versions of stuff then constrain your custom versions that you can put in normally. Uh, but uh, no, I, I've got uh, like Rook, Rook Seth, uh, installed and I'm using that uh, for uh, you know basically to to allow people to uh, uh, create their own uh, uh, storage uh, without my having to prove everything and you know the the rook stuff operator would be nice uh, you know like I, I wouldn't mind going to that I would as long as it didn't blow away my existing setup and everything that's stored in there uh, that would be sort of unfortunate but yeah, you know, so I guess in principle, good idea. See what the details are. You know, like if if uh, the Red Hat people are willing to make that work, you know, then I'm happy to jump on and support that as best I can. Um, can I just ask another question? Is this meant to replace the Red Hat operators catalog that's in OCP? Or is are we talking about the community operators that's currently in OKD? It's supposed to replace the the Red Hat one, not the community one. Okay, so, so we're, we're... it's to avoid collision between operators that are in the Red Hat catalog with those that are in the community catalog. So if okay. you want to push the same catalog, the same operator for both OKD and OpenShift, and you don't want to confuse. The, the, the customers, you will have a way for publishing the same operator also for community. So, okay, perfect. That, that, that's what I. That, I think that's the best approach. Yeah. So yeah. We, we are looking at the Red Hat operators that are in the sort of the the Red Hat catalog on OCP yes. and releasing yeah. them. Yeah, great. So yes. things like the Tecton, the pipeline, the right. serverless. So, Correct. So basically, because um, I've sort of resisted for the past quite a while uh, using my uh, you know, developer pull secret, uh, but from what I understand you're saying, Sandro, is that uh, with this new system, I should get the same operators uh, with no pull secret as I would get using my Red Hat pull secret. I, I can guarantee that you will have the same set of operators because uh, it, it will depend on the developers of the operator itself. So um, the idea is to open the possibility for this to happen. And I would like to encourage every operator maintainer to push to the OKD catalog as well. Right. And then I guess a related question would be, well, okay, so... Um... Does the community have any ability to do it if the Red Hat uh, developers uh, ignore it for a particular operator? Uh, well, being an, an OKD community catalog, I believe that it's possible that community can push there. But um, I, I have no clue that it, it has yeah, not I been discussed. So. These, yeah, these are all the details we need to work out. 
So yes, let's, exactly. let's get get the, the, the group of people who are interested in this together and put these questions into a document and then approach the respective people with those questions. I think that's the way forward for this. All right, so anything else before we move on from this topic? All right, so let's uh, look at the task list. Um, create a list of links to add to the PR against product documentation. To add an extra book to provide links to the community documentation. We haven't done that yet. That's to provide to Michael. Um, we should get started on that. If someone wants to take the initiative um, on that one, put your name next to it on that first task there. Uh, send email to the group to look at the code of conduct. Um, Diane wants us to get it in by the next main meeting. Uh, so I'll send a reminder email I get out one more time, but we've been asked about, you know, where is the code of conduct? Uh, you know, because it says actually even says on the website, like, in progress or something like that or to do. Uh, so let's uh, commit to all looking at that, and the main group will have a vote um, and, and sign off on it at the main meeting, the next main meeting next week. Uh, create template from general presentation. Uh, Sandra, did you get everything you need in terms of um, template, presentation template? Yeah, I put together kind of a template, share it with a few people for review. Uh, if it's okay for you, you can just add it to okay. wherever you can store that presentation okay. template. And so we'll change this to look over what Sandro created. Really, we'll do that. And we'll send the link out to the group via email. So do do we know where we want to store that? Are we going to put it in a central place or is it going to be looked after by somebody and then people contact them when they want it? I think or we can put we... it in a, I think we can put it in a central place. I don't see why not. Put it just add it to the room. docs the, the docs repo. Just check yeah. it into the docs repo, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh find out who's behind OKD LinkedIn. Who was gonna do that? That was Diane, I believe. Yeah, and um, don't know that anything has come of that. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about um, uh, vanity links yet, uh, and and the playlist. I wanted to create the playlist in at the same time that to see if we can have a vanity link for that playlist and for um, uh, the OKD group and see if not, maybe we create. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what that is. Call up for YouTube content. We haven't done that yet. Uh, does anyone want to to write up a call out for YouTube content? Anyone want to take a stab at a paragraph or two of an email to send out um, to the community asking for videos of installing OKD, um, using OKD? I'm always surprised that some of the videos I come across suggested to me that you know someone posted one a couple weeks ago that was installing OKD. I think on vSphere or something. It was just someone random like not uh, affiliated with the working group or anything like that. So it's like there are people out there making videos that's cool but we should see if we can get them um at least promoted uh, through our social media and stuff like that anyone want to take a stab at writing a paragraph or two to do that anyone all right we'll leave that as a standing item then um i've got too much on my plate to take on writing uh, review code of conduct for next meeting. We've got that. Um, I did talk to Vadim uh, about going over repo materials, uh, and that meeting will also have a conversation about closing down the dev Slack channel. Um, Brian, I'll get with you because Vadim had some suggested times that work well. So let's the three of us get together. And, um, okay, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and then we got to talk to Diane about SEO. Uh, I'll do that when I next meet with her when she gets back. Uh, anything else? Yeah, I, I just think we need to capture a task list that we need to work out what's going on with the um, the survey and also the Twitter credentials. Right. We talked so, we talked so, about it on the main meeting, but we haven't yeah, tracking it here. Sorry, I have updates on that. So um, uh, Diane now has the credentials. Uh, and we, we don't have an update on the survey yet. Turns out Driti was, was out for a couple of weeks uh, on PTO uh, and just got back, uh, I think, like in the past couple of days. 
Uh, so let's uh, check in with that. Um, uh, I'll asynchronously, I'll reach out um, to Driti directly and find out what the status is on the survey. Uh, and then let's commit to getting it out or signing off on it. If Driti can't do the extra work, let's just do it as it is, because I think it was pretty well close to being done. Because I think at this point, we just need to get something out uh, to help define sort of steps forward and whatnot. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Okay, great. Anything else? Uh, I, I've got something uh, sort of, uh, I guess, new and wildish in a way, um, but it does relate to documentation. Okay, so um, you might have seen uh, many years ago, uh, there were a couple of uh, books that Red Hat was, uh, you know, flogging for free. Um, one one of them was uh, you know OpenShift for developers uh, covers OpenShift three, and the other was DevOps for Open for uh, OpenShift three or something like that, um, and neither of them was ever updated for OpenShift four, uh, and uh, the uh, possibly because the authors are no longer around. Like Grant Shipley was uh, the, the one of the authors, and he's long gone. Um, but I, I wonder if it's if it's worth uh, updating those like they were introductory books, and it might be worth updating to OKD four. Um, but you know, the, I mean, it's sort of I guess where is the source? You know, who, who has the intellectual property rights, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there's a lot of issues. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, 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 I don't I, think. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Sorry, Bruce. Um... I actually think that's that would be incredibly useful because that's my main use case that I'm trying to achieve. Um, but I think there is a dependency on getting the operators sorted because at the minute we don't have an ability to easily install any of the DevOps tools that are in OCP in OKD at the minute until we get those Red Hat operators available to OKD. But I actually think that's a very, very valuable thing because I think one of the challenges is when we get OKD installed, it's like, well, what next? <laughs> right. Where do I go from here? And at the minute, until we get things like the, the, the pipelines, the Tekton, the GitOps, um, as, as an integral part of an OKD install, I think we're missing a huge part of the strategic getting started as a developer learning how to do pipelines with tectons rather than the, the old build subsystem. Um, yeah. uh, and I think... be, right, and I, I agree with that. And that, that would make the DevOps one difficult at the moment. Uh, but the developer one, um, OpenShift for developers, you know, a guide for impatient beginners, um, that one would be very easy to update. Uh, you know, basically, like I, I, I'm, running my students through analogous things, so I wouldn't have a big difficulty updating that. I mean, it was only like an 81 page document with a repo behind it so that you could run the code. Um, but that, that seems feasible. And it just sort of surprises me that there was this, I guess, big push from Red Hat back in you know, OpenShift 3, and some of the things you know, never carried forward. And, and it was, a, it was a, I think, a, a Somehow they they got involved with O'Reilly. O'Reilly published it. I don't know that they made any money since Red Hat was giving it away for free, but uh, you know it at least had the O'Reilly logo on it. Right. All right. Well, let's look into that. So, who wants to take that as a task? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to get involved with that. The question is where to. Well, you I mean, can I ask Diane. I could, we'll find out. Bruce, I'm going to add you. Diane, I could, I could, I could track down Grant. Um, let's ask, Di ask Diane, and I'll see if I can, um, you know, send an email to Grant uh, if I can find him again. Sure, he's out there. He's out there. Mr. Yeah. Shipley's out there. I see his name fly by every once in a while. So. Right. Okay, is there anything else that we have here? All right, well, let's uh, ah. end the meeting. Wait, oh. wait, wait. Well, 
one last comment. Okay, it's copyright uh, 2016 Red Hat. Okay. So Red Hat owns the intellectual property. Okay, well, we'll see. Maybe we can, you know, get them to update it or, or do something, yeah. By the way, that book, um, what is it? Uh, Hybrid Cloud Apps with OpenShift and Kubernetes is pretty good. That came out this summer. That I was actually really impressed. This last summer, I was actually pretty impressed with it. Yeah, well, there's, that's got there's like a, uh, three or four authors on it. Three authors on it. All right. Anything else? All right, sounds like we're good. I'm gonna stop recording and end the meeting and I'll see you all at the next main meeting that are gonna join us. Thank you to the new folks that joined us. Um, the, the main meeting next week would be the best one to find out about involvement and helping out um, the group in general. Um, and thanks Sandro for popping in and updating us on what happened Thursday. And I'll put um, more info on that and what came out of that meeting into the meeting notes. And I think we're good to go. See you folks. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Thank Take you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.